Sweden just turned a Reaper drone into an AWACS. This might be the perfect solution to the US AWACS drama. General Atomics and Saab just lobbed a grenade into the airborne early warning market. And honestly, it was about time. If you're a longtime viewer, you know how angry I was at the US Air Force for canceling its E-7 Wedgetail program as its replacement for the geriatric E-3 Sentry in favor of some yet-to-be-funded space-based intelligence solution. So, today's headline is more than welcome. Saab just revealed the new airborne early warning and control version of the MQ-9 Reaper. You know, the drone that's been circling the globe for a decade now, with eyes and ears big enough to make even the Royal Navy perk up. Hey friends, Wes here, Air Force AWACS veteran and former infantryman with the 101st Airborne Division. And this platform is poised to fill a yawning gap left by Western fleets trying to replace the legendary but aging E3 Sentry. At the Paris Air Show earlier this year, General Atomics and Saab dropped the kind of surprise that has defense attaches and industry bloggers sweating through their tailored suits. An MQ-9B drone now rolling off the assembly line with more airborne early warning gear than most countries can fit on a business jet. General Atomics, for its part, had brought every flavor of MQ-9B for the occasion. The Sky Guardian, the Sea Guardian, and even a new short takeoff and landing prototype that could theoretically leap from a ski jump on a Queen Elizabeth class carrier. The pitch was direct. Forget waiting a decade for manned wedge tails or ponying up for custom AWACS conversions on a business jet, the MQ-9B AWACS is shipping to anyone with a checkbook and a defensible patch of the sky. But what really set the tongues wagging was the word persistent. The MQ-9B's multi-day endurance suddenly makes persistent AWACS coverage as routine as weather balloons and a lot more useful. For countries like the United States, locked in procurement purgatory, it looked like an off-the-shelf answer to the E3 Century problem. Minus the 1970s vintage ashtrays, the high operating costs, and the never-ending surge for spare parts from museums. Add that to the pitch-perfect timing, the Royal Navy is publicly sweating the retirement of its crow's nest helicopter system, and the U.S. Marines are still chasing their Mux unicorn, and half of the world's air forces are on the rebound from the E-7 Wedgetail sticker shock. If you stop and think about it, this is an interesting twist on the larger U.S. drones that dominated the global war on terror. A good friend I served with in the Air Force went on to become a Reaper drone pilot dropping Hellfire missiles on terrorists in Afghanistan while sitting comfortably in an air-conditioned trailer in Nevada. Once Ukraine introduced the smaller quadcopter-style drones as weapons on the battlefield, suddenly the larger Global Hawk and Predator drones of the last decade looked downright ancient. The AWACS MQ-9B is actually an elegant solution to both NATO's massive fleet of long-endurance drones and its sudden AWACS shortage. It never occurred to me, but the Saab has just shown the world that the future of airborne early warning is less about custom airframes and more about plug-and-play modularity. Anywhere, anytime, at a price point that won't induce political heartburn. Suddenly, the idea of persistent, networked, globe-spanning, airborne radar coverage makes perfect sense. The first thing that jumps out to me is the price. Traditional AWACS solutions, whether it's the E3 Sentry, the Wedgetail, or even newer business jet conversions like the Global Eye, are not just expensive to buy, they're wallet shredders to operate. Hangars, flight crews, special runways, and a platoon of specialists to keep the radar blinking. That was my job in the US Air Force. Now, none of this comes cheap. By contrast, the NQ-9B arrives with a running cost at a relative bargain. You want all-day coverage? You just launch another one. No crew change, no hotel bookings, no duty day limitations. You can scale up as needed or scale down when the threat dies down. But cheaper doesn't mean dumber in this case. The drone is a high-altitude brain on wings, loaded with Saab's gallium nitride ESA radar tech that's 
better at picking out targets than a Swedish customs officer with a grudge. Instead of a human crew dozing through shifts at 35,000 feet, you have ground-based operators watching feeds, sharing data, and most importantly, staying out of missile range. When sensors pick up a new low-flying drone, swarm, or cruise missile, they can send alerts straight to the interceptors, ground crews, or a ship somewhere over the horizon via upgraded Link 16 connections. If you're a military planner for a country not named the United States, you probably got more threats than spare parts. The MQ-9B's plug-and-play design means you can fit it with whatever comms, weapons, or sensors you need for your situation. Need persistent radar coverage over a strait, a forward base, or a fleet? No problem. Want to bolt on an EO IR sensor and turn it into a multi-mission ISR workhorse? Done. The days of buying single mission, gold-plated platforms that must be treated like a Fabergé egg are fading fast. This drone is about fielding a network of good enough assets everywhere you need them. And then there's the fact that nobody is risking lives to put this thing in the air. AEW missions are high value, high risk. Every enemy planner wants to knock them out first. Russia even revived a Soviet-era nuclear-tipped air-to-air -air missile to reach into the backfield where an AWACS lives during a fight, presumably just to blind NATO. But when your early warning eyes are flying uncrewed at 40,000 feet, suddenly you can take risks you'd never allow with human air crews. If you lose a drone, you replace it, not hold a national day of mourning and a congressional inquiry. So here's why the Brits are particularly interested and why everyone else should be also. The Royal Navy's dilemma is a familiar one. How do you keep up with the Joneses, or the Russians in this case, when your only AEW platform is a helicopter that was first designed when the first Top Gun movie was in theaters? The Crow's Nest Merlin is set for retirement by 2029. The Brits have already started talking about hybrid air wings with drones and long-range missiles alongside their F-35Bs but they need airborne radar that can keep pace. Well, Saab just gave it to you blokes. Pip, pip, cheerio, governor. An MQ-9B AWACS package could be the ultimate sandbox for future tech. Modular sensors, digital comms, AI-assisted battle management, all riding on a platform that's already flying in half a dozen allied air forces. That's more than a gap filler. It's a blueprint for how the US and its partners could decentralize airborne early warning across theaters and across continents. The U.S. Air Force currently operates about 206 active MQ-9A Reaper drones. These are part of a larger MQ-9 fleet that the Air Force plans to maintain through 2035, topping off at around 140 airframes post-retirement of some of the older blocks. As of September of 2024, there were 206 active MQ-9A Reapers in service. In total, the U.S. Air Force has procured over 300 MQ-9s, though not all remain operational. According to Air and Space Forces reporting, plans include retiring older Block 1 variants by 2025, followed by select Block 5 airframes through 2027. After that, the service will stabilize its fleet at 140 Reapers through 2035. So right now, you're looking at roughly 200 to 210 fully operational MQ-9A Reapers in the U.S. Air Force arsenal. Some of these can and should be converted by Saab and General Atomics into the MQ-9B. While Congress debates and Boeing counts its lobbying ships, don't be surprised if the next eye in the sky isn't a jet bristling with radomes but a family of drones orbiting quietly overhead, sending data to wherever America needs it. No flight suits required. But I believe the biggest takeaway here is survivability and redundancy. In a future fight where adversaries have long-range missiles, hypersonic weapons, and a talent for mischief, survivability is about being everywhere and nowhere at once. Shoot down one drone, and the others pick up the slack. Lose a single manned AWACS, and you're suddenly flying blind over half a continent with distributed sensors. Coverage gaps are a thing of the past, and the enemy's targeting calculus just got a lot harder. It's also about reach, literal and figurative. A single MQ-9B can park itself on the edge of a battle space for the better part of a day, 
peering down over mountain passes, ocean straits, or contested borderlands. String a few of them together and suddenly you're not just watching one front, you're surveilling entire theaters. The Baltics, the Taiwan Strait, the Black Sea, all at once. This isn't the world of limited sortie rates and aircrew rest cycles. It's the age of persistent stare. Then there's integration. A drone-centric AWACS network means your sensors are fusing data with ground radars, satellites, naval ships, and fighters in real time. Targeting data from a Sea Guardian off the coast of Norway can cue a Patriot battery in Poland or a destroyer in the Mediterranean. This is what every general has been mumbling about for years, multi-domain awareness. Now, thanks to Saab, it's an achievable, upgradable architecture, one that's a nightmare for any adversary thinking about a surprise attack. Finally, survivability isn't just about dodging missiles. It's about logistical resilience. Drones can fly from remote airstrips, need less maintenance, and don't demand a crew rotation or a VIP room at the O Club. Man, freaking officers, man. If you want a sensor that doesn't call in sick, complain about the chow, or need to be rescued behind enemy lines, you found your candidate. This drone is coming online at a perfect time, just as Western Air Forces face a fork in the road. The old E3s are flying on borrowed time. Wedgetail's fate is tied up in American budget politics, and the E2D Hawkeye is a niche platform. Space-based alternatives are years away from operational reality, the NQ-9B AWACS might not be the forever solution, but it's the bridge, the insurance policy, and the combat enhancer the West needs right now. If you are in the market for an airborne radar that's tough, flexible, and doesn't need a hotel room at the end of its 12-hour mission, Saab just gave you the answer. For the Royal Navy, for the Marines, and for any other NATO country biting its nails about E3 retirement, here's your sign. The future of airborne early warning might not have a cockpit at all. Just a satellite link, a radar pod, and a reaper that doesn't know how to quit. That's it for today, my friends. Subscribing is the best way to keep this channel healthy, so consider helping me hit that 100k goal. And as always, glory to Ukraine, glory to the heroes. Crimea is Ukraine.